What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Bain back again with another insecure video. And in this video, I'm breaking down season three, episode two. Let's get into it. Issa starts the episode off getting apartment rejections and still walking on eggshells a bit with Daniel. It's taking a bit of time to process, but Daniel definitely hurt Issa last episode and is going to try and shift his behavior accordingly. We got y'all is getting a redesign because even though Joanne wasn't feeling Issa in delivering the feedback, she can't hide from the fact that the community she hoped her nonprofit would help is backing away with their hands up because they are displaying toxic ally syndrome. I think I just made up that term, but y'all know it fits, so we rolling with it. Like Joanne defending the logo because it's her white hand holding up these black kids. Child, moving on. Daniel is in the studio kicking it with his niece and she helps usher in what we learn to be Daniel's big, biggest struggle. He wants to make meaningful music, but to break into the industry, you kind of got to focus on getting hot. Issa in the episode is also in Kelly's office trying to figure out her financial future after she's getting apartment rejections left and right. She has a credit score in the toilet and no savings and barely hanging on at work. Shout out to Kelly to, for pointing out Issa and Daniel's situation and how um, she better utilize it to the best of her ability because that comes very rare. She tries to double back to her brother, but nope, it's too late and ultimately applies for a property manager position at another apartment building. We meet Vanessa and Daniel, why is you fucking sis again? She is with the no attachment and she ain't really checking for you and bruh, I feel unseen for you. She was more interested in an overpriced hoodie and light skin love than you making your career moves and better connecting. At lunch with her co-workers, I think Issa has an aha moment where she says that she don't want to be the voice of all black people and she is met with it is what it is. It's one thing for her to feel like that and to think that they don't know it at work, but for them to know and then lean on that and lean on her in this way and Joanne ain't even respecting her, her experience, perspective and insight into her culture. It's kind of like, why am I here? Aside from the fact that Issa ain't got nowhere to go, like she ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, this could be the beginning of the end for Issa at We Got Y'all. Her suggesting Joanne hire more people of color is important, but also could be subconsciously her hedging her bets and plotting her escape. Issa decides to show up for Daniel by playing wing women to him at the club when they are trying to connect with Spider and they run into their friend Khalil from high school. This scene literally is one of my favorite scenes for seeing Issa and Daniel's real chemistry. It's kind of brilliant beauty how Issa leans into her awkwardness and naivete to disarm Daniel and help him feel more comfortable in a space where he is adding extra pressure to himself while also battling his own ego. In the club, we get to see exactly how great of a producer Daniel is as he breaks down a new beat implementation he would do for Spider. And we get to see Issa at her best, melding music, support of her friend, and just being herself. Both Issa and Daniel have a moment seeing each other with the opposite sex, which is hilarious to me, but not so much to them. More notably, as we move through the episode and we get out of the club, they go to have dinner after. And Daniel says, if I would have got shot, what would the news story have said? And I thought this was really, really dope because they connect over the feeling of like they're just getting started in their careers or simply getting nowhere, which is so real. You can accomplish a bunch of things, but then if you don't keep the momentum or you're not seeing yourself reach certain milestones in a certain amount of time, then you can also start to feel stuck or just like you're spinning your wheels in the mud which ultimately makes you wonder what am I doing this for and it was dope to see both of them connect to that very visceral feeling that they're both going through in their respective lives I love this moment of vulnerability between them at the diner it felt really grounded in their friendship and mutual respect for the struggle that it is to create the life you want define let alone find success, build meaningful connections, and somehow amongst it all, actually be happy. Now, by the end of the episode, they are blurring the friend lover line again with the vibes. But listen, they have had a few true friend moments in this episode. Ain't nobody gonna take that away from me. That is my breakdown from episode two of season three. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. Are you excited for season five? Be sure to hit the subscribe button and um, turn on your bell notification so that you don't miss any of my insecure coverage. I'm breaking down all of the episodes of insecure leading up to the season five, which is the fifth and final season premiere. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.